Right, so today in this video, we're going to have a look at centrifugal pumps, partly because I wasn't really sure where to start and I thought, why not? We'll have a look at centrifugal pumps. They're kind of quite important. You'll see them all over the place. Uh, they're very common. Um, we've got some models in here. We've even got different types of impeller and things like that. So in fact, we've got, got quite a few. I think it's a bit OTT on the centrifugal pump side. Let's load up a basic centrifugal pump, one that you're likely to see in most industrial settings. So this is it. And as you can see, it's got sort of a body over here and it's got a casing, this section where my mouse is now. It's got an impeller, which is this rotating bit. And then we've got a central shaft, which runs from one side. This is the drive end over here. And it goes all the way to the load, which is this end over here. So essentially what this is doing, it's drawing in fluid in through this gap here. It's gonna be drawing that fluid in and then it's gonna discharge it radially outwards so that it comes out the side of the impeller. So let's just see, see how it does that. The impeller rotates, it's throwing the fluid outwards, radially away from the center axis of rotation. And then we're getting a pressure increase, a velocity decrease, and then the fluid is gonna flow out of this discharge pipe here. And that's essentially how it's working. The reason we've got this weird shaped casing, it's a bit like a snail. The reason we've got that is because it helps us convert some of the velocity to pressure. So that's why we have it. It's called a volute casing. If you don't have a volute casing, what you'll see is a diffuser ring but you'll typically see a diffuser ring on multi-stage centrifugal pumps, whereas volute casings are used for single-stage centrifugal pumps. While we're talking about that, let's have a look at this design. This design is supported at one end. It's supported on this side, and that's because it's an overhung centrifugal pump. That makes it an overhung pump because the impeller's hanging over here where it's supported over here. So with that design, let me pull up a different one here because I just want to show you this. With the design that's overhung, there's only one other option you can really have, and that's where you support the impeller from both sides. And where you do that, it becomes a between bearings centrifugal pump. So this is pretty much the same again. Let's have a look here. We've got the fluid comes in, in here. Then it goes around the size of the impeller, gets sucked into the impeller, not just on that side, but also on this side as well. So this is double suction. And then we're gonna discharge it through the middle again. So you can see an incredibly slow turning impeller, but there you go, if it's all rotating. But this particular model, first it's double suction, it's sucking from both sides. And second, it's a between bearings because there's a bearing over here and there is a bearing over here. So it's essentially, in honesty, it's an overhung centrifugal pump. The only difference is if we're looking from this angle, then we see all the same parts. We see a shaft, we see bearings, and we see here what's called the packing or sealing arrangement. I'll come back to that in a second. And then we've got the impeller. And if we just mirror that, it's the exact same. So it's, it's like combining two overhung pumps into one. Why would we do this? We do it because the pump's bigger. The impeller is bigger, there are more forces that you need to balance, and so you install uh, the impeller in between two bearings in order that we can have a larger impeller and balance some of that vibration and some of those forces a little bit better. Not only that, but you're also going to generate a bit of thrust when you're drawing the fluid in, and with a between bearings pump like this one here, you can balance that thrust a little bit better. Now, we talked about the sealing arrangement. So sealing arrangement is this here. This whole arrangement sits within what's called a stuffing box. We've got packing, it's this rope kind of stuff here. The bit that looks like rope, it's on this side and it's also on the other side here. That's packing material. What it'll be is, it's, it's kind of like rope, but what happens is you take the rope and sometimes you'll cover it in some sort of lubricant and you'll wrap it around in this space within the stuffing box. It will go around the shaft. You can see the shaft is in the middle here. And then you'll use a coolant, maybe some sort of lubricant, or maybe even the process fluid 
and that will go through this lantern ring. In fact, the process fluid yeah, may also go through there. And the idea is that you're lubricating the rope material. And the reason you do this, or lubricating the packing, I should say, the reason you do this, though, is to keep it cool. So when the pump is rotating, you've got the shaft rotating quite quickly. It generates heat due to friction. And what you've done with this packing material is you've compressed it using a follower. This is a gland follower where my mouse is. You can see this screw threads here. Let's just see if I can get around the other side here. Okay, so we're tightening this gland follower onto the packing material, and it's going to squeeze that packing material to such a degree that we don't get any leakage from our volute casing. You can see the shaft penetrates through here. So we're not going to get any leaking coming through here and then being discharged into the surrounding area. That's the purpose of it. If we don't use packing, what we're going to use is a mechanical seal. Mechanical seals cost a bit more, so people tend to use packing. There are some other benefits with mechanical seals, but generally you'll see packing quite often because it's cheap and it's cheerful. The problem is with packing, when you're trying to maintain the pump, people over tighten the follower. And what that does, it actually crushes the packing. And there's only one way for the packing then to go. It's to press hard up against the shaft. And when it presses hard up against the shaft, what you'll find is that it wears the shaft. So you'll get wear on the shaft, you'll get excess heat, and then you'll have to continually tighten up the follower to stop the leakage. You measure the leakage and drippage past the shaft, sort of how many drops per minute, um, but that'll continually increase. So ideally what you want to do is tighten it up enough that you get the, the leakage that you require so that the packing is cooled, but not so much that you totally stop that drip rate coming through the pump and also you know you want to stop that excessive wear on the shaft as well it's a common way to damage the pump and it happens quite a lot i'll be honest the other things that you're going to pay attention to on this pump are the bearings and you may have different type of bearings here these are ball bearings also known as anti-friction bearings it depends though on the pump design because if you're dealing with frost if you're dealing with a lot of that then you may use different style of bearings if the impellers quite large you may use different style of bearings as well because ball bearings they're, they're good all round bearings but sometimes you might need cylinders instead of balls and then yeah that's a different type of bearing entirely that's all for now i hope you enjoyed this presentation and if you want to have more of them make sure to follow me or subscribe or do all those fun things and check out some of the links in the description or comments section because there you'll be able to read up a little bit more about centrifugal pump you can load up stuff like this tells you about the pump, what it does, or at least this is not the article. There's another one that goes with it, but you can have a read through that, tell you about cavitation and things like that. Thanks for your time and see you on the next video.